Welcome to the podcast, Winning Through Culture, where we're helping entrepreneurs stay impactful and relevant. I'm your host, Tim Flanagan. We are here today with Tony Tenero. Tony is the managing chair of C12 Greater Charlotte. We're going to talk a little bit about Tony and his background and who C12 is. And our primary focus today, though, in our conversation with Tony is how culture informs uh, creating great organizations and how C12 has been a uh, not only an influential uh, impact in my life and the development of the culture of our organization, but how they've done that uh, many times over across the country. Tony and I have known each other now for uh, almost the better part of a decade. Tony was persistent in getting me to pay attention to uh, the possibility of uh, joining C12 at C12 Group now, probably six years ago, I guess, Tony, if, if my math is right, coming up on six and a half. I'm very glad that he persisted and got me involved in C12, and we'll come back to how that's uh, had an impact on the culture of our organization. So welcome, Tony. Uh, why don't you tell us just a little bit about your background and, and uh, how you came to uh, be with C12 and then maybe a little bit about who C12 is for those that don't know. Well, thanks, Tim. Yeah, it's great to be with you here. Thanks for doing these kinds of podcasts. I think these, the theme of a podcast like this just in, lets other business owners and CEOs know <clears throat> that this is possible, that, that these, uh, that values count and uh, that they make a difference. And so I'm, I'm just glad to, I'm just glad to be with you. Um, I, uh, I went to University of Maryland, uh, the state of New Jersey, and went there because they would take my New Jersey state scholarships and my loans and all the things. And I was still a little bit further out of the state of New Jersey on my own. Um, when I graduated from there, I got a good job with, with the Quaker State Corporation, spent 15 years with them. Um, my last uh, my last job with them was to lead the distributor organization. Um, at that time, we called it worldwide. Now you probably call it globally. And I think that was I learned a lot about caring about people during that time. But I would have to say that um, you know, like any corporate environment, and what I found later at Black and Decker, and in some small companies, was that the accountability was all around um, economic results. And uh, it wasn't really about uh, how I was serving my family or how I was uh, dealing with, uh, you know, the stresses of being a young guy uh, in business um, and, and uh, you know, raising a family and having uh, good, strong core values. Uh, it was more about how fast could I get to this part of the country and generate revenue there, leading a team to do that. Um, I found out about C12 um, almost 16 years ago now. Uh, it was uh, in June of 04, we launched our first group. I fell in love with it as soon as I saw it. I'd never seen anything that was so much about business and yet was so much about um, a greater purpose, so much about having a faith in your business, making a difference with your business. And it really brought the two together for me. Uh, and I, again, I'd never seen anything like it. So I went to um, North Georgia and uh, went to a meeting of C12 chairs. At that time, there was probably about eight that were really doing anything. Now there's over 110, I think, around the country. And, and I went to Florida and spent some time with a guy named Buck Jacobs, uh, who I hope you'll, you might get on this, sh on this podcast sometime. I think you uh, and and uh, as a result of that, we came back to Charlotte and we started it. And we had, um, I think, seven people came to the first uh, board group. We had four join. We had a fifth one join and we were off. And I think uh, the Lord, you know, has been building it ever since. And he was great to me in the beginning because he gave me five CEOs who would sit around the table uh, and be there for when other people came to see it. And, and so that was, a, that was a great start. And uh, then I met you and here we are. Yeah, I mean, I, I know for me, I for uh, a, a pretty long period of time was trying to find a group, an organization that would help support uh, the integration of my faith into my business 
and it was uh, quite frankly a difficult task at first. I did not know of C12 at the time, and again, just to, you know, C12 is a, effectively an organization of, of business leaders, and uh, there was also a, a parallel group of key players that are focused on the integration of uh, their faith in their business uh, and, and attending to uh, their businesses and their employees with a, a spirit of stewardship while also operating uh, in the realm of excellence uh, and getting results. And that was, <clears throat> um, I was very driven to uh, be successful in business, yet at the same time, I really felt compelled to have uh, an integration of faith. So when we finally uh, got put together uh, uh, and had a couple lunches, and my first excuse to you was I was too busy <laughs> to give up a day a month uh, to go to a meeting. And, uh, and look at all and look at all the extra time you have now. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, and yet you persisted, and I I will never forget my first meeting. Uh, the authenticity of the conversations, um, and I immediately, inside of a day, saw a path to how I could integrate uh, my faith and make make decisions as a leader uh, with my faith as the orientation, and do it in a way that um, uh, really, again, could could elevate us to excellence and and keep a focus on. In that particular meeting, we talked about a very difficult decision I was wrestling with. And I got great counsel from the group on the next steps on how to proceed. So um, it's an outstanding organization and um, we'll put in the show notes how to, how to uh, find you and how to find the uh, C12 organization for those that are interested in learning more. But you know, the, the thing that uh, struck me in, in our monthly meetings is we always have very relevant topics, uh, both on the ministry side and then a, a very uh, relevant, I've always found, quite frankly, very timely topic on the business side, uh, whether it's, you know, uh, compensation uh, strategies for key employees, uh, strategic planning, uh, risk mitigation, again, a lot of very, very relevant business topics. But it was probably four years ago, Tony, we had a, a uh, session on the impact of culture and the power of culture in our business. And that particular session really struck me as, hey, wait a minute, you know, I've always focused the business on what we do and how we show up um, in the marketplace, almost from a marketing perspective and the tools we have and the capabilities we have. And those are all important. Um, but I realized I was not uh, being very intentional, quite frankly, about, about our, uh, the culture of the organization. I was aware of what we had. There were elements of it, quite frankly, I did not like. Um, and, and there were elements that I, I did like, but I didn't really have a roadmap on how to be intentional about that. And that particular session laid that out, um, which really started a journey uh, that's quite frankly led to this podcast, Winning Through Culture. So um, why don't you, if you could, Tony, talk a little bit about um, how you have seen businesses that take an intentional approach to culture development, how has that played out for them? And what are some of the common characteristics you see, uh, given that you work literally now with hundreds of business owners? Yeah, th thanks, Tim. I think uh, it probably starts with the C12 mission statement, which is equipping uh, Christian CEOs and business owners to build great businesses for a greater purpose. And so, we actually say, um, you know, this, this concept of, of building a great business uh, is as important to uh, a Christian business owner, CEO, as it is to any uh, business owner, CEO. But the difference is that uh, we have a different why behind our doing it. And the why is this greater purpose. And I, I think as, as business owners come into C12, some have already understood that there's a greater why out there uh, and they want to be better at it. And they know that getting around uh, the table with other business owners and CEOs facing common problems, common opportunities with a common set of core values makes that just a little bit easier. There's some who come to C12 and it's almost a brand new idea and it immediately resonates with them and they want to be around that table. 
And I think what happens then is the intentionality of building a ministry as a business begins to take hold. And often it starts uh, with community projects and serving outside of, uh, of the business uh, to, to make a difference. And so we have members who are uh, active in many, many ministries around Charlotte and around the country and around the world. Um, and all of that is, is great. And, and we're, we're a proponent of that. But to really have, and where you really see great traction around this concept, Tim, as you know, of, of having a business as a ministry is what it does for the mission field that we believe you have just by having a business and by doing business, that you have employees and their families, you have customers and their families, you have vendors and their families, trade associates. So you have this natural mission field and we use a, a number uh, of 5,000 that our average C12 member, and of course an average is immediately wrong. So we use a number of 5,000 and, and, and our members then typically will touch 5,000 people a year just by doing business. And, and that, the, that transformation uh, to, to intentionally um, better that mission field uh, emotionally, physically, and spiritually is what drives our members on the business as a ministry side of the business. And I think um, we, can, we'll talk, we can talk a, a lot about the great ways that employees, uh, their families, uh, customers. We've had weekend to remember um, gift certificates given, marriages saved, children supported. Um, we've had um, salvations on loading docks. Uh, we've had uh, prayer and Bible studies. We've had educations funded. Uh, it's, it's just amazing to see all that the Lord will do with a business if you just leave room for him to work. Uh, at the same time, um, from a practical standpoint, we believe, I know you believe, and I think people who hear this podcast, um, many of them will believe that, that we are created for a greater purpose. And we spend a lot of time looking for what that greater purpose can be. And, and um, when an organization comes together and talks about a greater purpose, as you do and as our members do, um, their employees respond to that. They want a greater purpose. They want to be part of something better. So what does that mean? Well, they're more engaged and we know more engaged employees are better performers. Uh, we know that it's not about just um, another 50 cents an hour, uh, that, that there's, that there's a, a, a compensation beyond money that once you're competitive in, in your compensation, then um, the rest of it is about making a difference. And our employees of our members stay, they stay longer. So our retention is up. When retention is up, you know the, the costs of turnover to any business. So when you have retention is up and engaged employees, you're gonna run a better business. You're gonna lead a better business. You're gonna have a better team. So just we, that's, those are just natural occurrences um, just like gravity, if you do it right. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's excellent. I mean, that you talked a lot about the, the people side of business and uh, I call it the humanity of business. You definitely spoke to, in essence, investing in your people. And I don't mean just in their training, but, um, you know, some very specific ways that a business, a CEO, and their leadership team can invest in the welfare of their people. And I know from my vantage point, at least my own personal experience, we have been very intentional about this now and obviously are constantly seeking to get better. And at the same time, though, it definitely, when, when we attend to all areas of our, of our employees, in our case, advisors' lives, those that, that choose to engage with us in that regard, 
um, we definitely see that they are more successful in business because their whole person is in essence being attended to not just uh, helping them reach the bottom line or to your point, make some more money. Those are nothing inherently wrong with that, but um, that's the byproduct of us investing in them. If you think about it, what is our lasting legacies? Yeah. You know, at some point, do, do we want someone to say, well, he was a great business owner and made a ton of money and lived a great life and spent, you know, time out on the lake. And again, nothing wrong with that. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing wrong with being, uh, you know, financially successful at all. In fact, um, we have a saying around C12 that an unprofitable business is a terrible ministry. <laughs> First of all, you have no money to invest. And second, everybody's worried about making a profit and they, they forget all about all the things you and I just talked about. Not much to give back either. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. So there's, you know, there's this idea of, um, of being profitable is, is good for a business, of course. But the lasting legacy is um, the bottom line of our people. So I, I actually reported to a guy at Quaker State years ago, and he would say, a business has two bottom lines, profit and people. And, and we need to grow both. And I was a beneficiary of that from him. And so I think uh, what C12 does, what we talk about, what, what businesses that talk about these things and work on these things try to do is to, is to take that people part and, and take it in, in, and split it into this emotional, physical, spiritual development of our people. And uh, we, can, we can provide a foundation for them to do all three. Yeah, my, my uh, predecessor, Ivan Heinrichs, when he turned the company over to me uh, 17 years ago, he, he told me two things that have stuck with me um, very strongly. One was about a two-minute conversation on stewardship and what that really meant, which culminated in a statement he gave me, which was leave the campsite better than you found it. And the, 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 he actually gave me a little card, uh, the stewardship statement on it, and, and obviously leave the campsite better than you found. It's easy to remember and visualize, and that's been a driving force on my end uh, for how we've, we've tried to guide our organization at this point. And certainly the, what I've learned both from you and C12 has, has been very, very impactful in that regard. You know, I think, Tim, something else about that is, is um, depending on the size of your organization, um, the, on, the only way you can really impact people on a, on a, on a personal basis, on an individual, uh, holistic person uh, basis, is you need to know them. You need to, you need to take time to understand who they are, you know. And um, maybe when some of the you know, business owners we, we both know, including maybe us, started out, that was a lot easier to do. <laughs> today. And yeah. so it's really, you know, if you think about how this is going to work, the challenge, I think, is not so, we're going to keep learning, we're going to keep growing, we're going to keep getting better at this, because we're motivated to do so. And that's, that's the kind of people that often sit around our, our, our C12 tables, our continuous learners. But how do you put a culture like that in place when it's not only up to you? How do you get your team to deal with the people that report to them the way you would like them to if, if you could do it yourself? And, that, and that's why the core values are so critical because they, they tell people how to do what they do, uh, not just what to do. And, and, and they tell people how to do that when we're not standing next to them mm -hmm. and over their shoulders. Yeah, I, you know, I was thinking about what you said, and I was thinking that it, it, that's that's a real challenge for us is to is to cascade this culture through the organization beyond w where we can go ourselves. Yeah, what are um, I know my own experience, but what are some ways you've seen people effectively do that, Tony? Uh, we have um, some of our members and and others that we we know out in the marketplace will take on personal. Well, the first thing you have to do is you have to have 
time in your schedule to do it. That's number one. And as, if you don't make any margin in your schedule, if you don't have a lifestyle, business lifestyle that allows you to do this, you're, you're always going to be running behind. So that the first thing is to, to successfully work on that. And we're all, we're all trying, we're all in the boat together on that, trying to get better at that. But then it is to potentially take on personal mentoring um, uh, workshops and go a level down into the organization. So you go beyond the level that reports to you with a small group of employees that, that you can mentor personally. Uh, another is to make it part of the job descriptions and part of the evaluations. So uh, we have um, members who say their direct reports are responsible and are evaluated on how well they can minister to their organization and they, they talk about what that looks like. And you, you know, to, to, to uh, evaluate somebody, you have to have some metrics. So it's things like, um, how often do you meet one-on-one? -on -one? What's your agenda for your one-on-one -on -one with your direct reports? What progress have you seen in personal development, in professional development, in leadership, in your direct reports? Um, so th those are some of the things. Uh, some of the other things we have are very intentional caring teams, teams of employees who um, are from various parts of the organization who develop um, ministry plans for the business, including uh, the employees of the business. And you know, the people, the people closest, closest to the operation are the ones who know the most about it and should probably be more directed to, to engage in the development of tools and programs and things that are needed. So those, those caring teams can help a lot to, uh, to really serve the organization. So those, those are just some, some simple ones. I mean, we have, um, we've seen members who can come back to the group and talk about um, employees that have worked at the company, uh, done well at the company, have moved on to other positions and have come back just to say to them, um, you know, thank you. You got me started on the right path and here's where I am today and I just wanted to come back and say thanks. Uh, we have some that have never left their organizations and have moved up and are now uh, successors to those businesses. And the founder or the, the CEO owner uh, who, who uh, was running the business, looking and building a successor, can feel that they have a legacy in place. Yeah, it's, it sounds like a lot of taking uh, as a leader, investing uh, yourself and your time in your key people uh, to, in essence, uh, reinforce um, the values of the organization to reinforce the behaviors um, and the results that, that you're looking to obtain uh, and to leverage uh, those leaders to then do the same with uh, the rest of, of their organization, their direct reports. Yeah, it's, it's critical. It, it's critical. Um, you, you would like to have the organization run the same way, whether you're there or not. And if, and if you want to have a, uh, if you want to leave a company well, you know, if you want to leave the campfire ground, the campground better than you found it, yep. then, you know, you, there has to be a new park ranger, I guess, right? I mean, there has to be a new, new leader and you got to develop that, that leader. And so it's really, um, uh, it's probably one of the most rewarding things I've seen when I see our, our members uh, we, we turn our table into a board of directors once, once a month for one member a month. And when you can see the, the trend lines go up for not only the performance of the business, not only revenues and profits and return on investments, but when you see the organization uh, performance go up, when you see the, the rankings of the organization across a series of metrics, and you, you see that the organization is moving towards more and more tens 
across that uh, because of the training, because of the intentionality of that. And, and we share the wins. So we, you know, we celebrate those, those marriages that have turned around, those kids that have gotten an education, uh, all the things that we're, we're talking about. So Tony, as, as we kind of come to a close here, I, you know, if, if someone's listening to this podcast and, you know, they've been uh, diligently building their business and haven't really been intentional about culture or the culture of the organization and, you know, they want to maybe make some changes, what are a couple of maybe one, two, three things, simple things to start as a focus yeah. like one, one of the things to recognize right away is that every company has a culture. You either built one intentionally or one just grew up around you, right? So one thing right away, what's that? It's what you tolerate, yeah. <laughs> it's what you, what you tolerate, exactly right. So I think, you know, this, this idea of, um, I would say one of the first things they could do would bring their key people together and talk to them about what, what kind of a culture do, do they do they think the, the the company has, and try to put some key words together for that? Um, if they have a mission statement or core values, core principles uh, of of the business, I would say um, if they if they haven't spent any time on culture, the first thing they need to do is to go find whatever book they put that in on whatever shelf it sits on, <laughs> find it and take it and read it and see if it really makes any sense or not. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so, so often these are written by, you know, marketing. We're going to be the greatest uh, company in the world, serving the, our customers with the highest excellence. And so I think, you know, the, those are some of the first things to do is kind of see where you're at. Take, take a temperature of, of where you are in your culture. And then I, I, I would then say, um, if, you're, if you have a faith about, uh, about you as a person. Uh, I think then one thing to do is to, is to recognize that this company doesn't belong to you. It's the Lord's company. And he, he has a culture in mind. And I would start talking to him about what that culture is for that business and, and start to think about the principles there uh, and, and to be intentional about developing a, a good mission statement, uh, good representing good core values um, and, and begin to talk in your company about those things. Um, I think most people will be surprised. Most of our members have been surprised um, if you get past the fear of actually entrusting your organization and potentially even expressing your faith in your organization. If you can get past the, the fear that everyone's going to quit or your customers are going to quit um, and, and you just start to have good, simple dialogue and give your people permission to come back and tell you where, uh, where they think you're off base in the way the business is running compared to, to what you believe. And if you can just get those things started, um, your people will help carry you. There's got to be a leader. You know, somebody's got to lead the parade, but there's, there's going to be people that are going to be marching in it with you and, and they'll, they'll carry you a long way towards where you want to go. Yeah. You and I have talked about, you know, if you gave Jesus a tour of your company and walked him through, you know, what would he see? What would he say? What would his observations be? And that's definitely a powerful way to take a look at from a faith perspective in your personal relationship with God, with Jesus, taking that tour, uh, which I have done before. And it's, um, it's a it's an interesting experience uh, to say the least. So I appreciate you sharing that idea with me. You're welcome. I think it's a it's a play on the fresh eyes, right? Yes. It's looking at your business with fresh eyes, but they're not your eyes. <laughs> True. Well, um, as as we wrap up here, let me uh, say two things. Uh, one, thank you very much for being a mentor, my friend Tony. You have had a very positive impact in my life as has our C12 group and the people I sit at that table with uh, between you and they have had a very positive impact on me as a leader, which in turn has, I think, had a positive impact on many people. So thank you for uh, fulfilling your mission in life um, 
and uh, being bold and brave uh, in helping business leaders integrate their faith um, into the into the day to day business uh, of being good stewards of their companies. Thank you, Tim. It's a real. First of all, it's it's a it's a, a lot of fun being your friend, and it's a great privilege to to lead the, the groups that that we sit in. Um, I, I always I've never considered myself very worthy uh, to be able to do that. So it's always been very easy for me to recognize that the Lord builds and, and takes care of those groups and uses us imperfect people to, to do it. So yes, he does. It's great to be with you. Well, thank you. Well, Tony Tenero, managing chair of C12 Greater Charlotte. is our guest today. And uh, we'll, we'll have some uh, information about how to reach Tony and or C12 in our show notes. So thank you very much. I've enjoyed spending time with you on this episode today and be sure to continue along this winning journey with me. Thank you for listening to the Winning Through Culture podcast and remember, stay impactful and relevant. To connect with us, you can find us on Instagram and LinkedIn at Winning Through Culture and find us online at winningthroughculture.com or just go to the show notes where you'll find all the links. We look forward to connecting with you and hearing from you. Thanks for listening.